Hello, you right. So the next thing that we are going to be looking at is how to simplify ratios. Okay, so putting them in their simplest form. And this is going to take a lot of work from what we did with our fractions unit. Okay, so knowing our multiplication and our division, it's handy to have a multiplication grid with you. So by the end of the session, we want to be able to simplify our ratios, make them the smallest possible number that they can be. All right, so a ratio Remember, is, a sim is going to be simplified by dividing both numbers, remember there's always two or more numbers, in the ratio by their highest common factor. So remembering your highest common factor is a number that goes into both of the numbers that we are talking about, okay? And ratios, when we communicate them in written um, examples, they need to be of the same unit. So both of your numbers need to be in kilograms. We can't have one number in kilograms and one number in grams. Both of your numbers need to be in centimetres or both of them need to be in metres or both of them need to be in kilometres. We can't have one of one unit and another of another unit. So we need to learn how to simplify that in that way as well. Right, I'm going to run through some examples of kind of questions that you will get. So I am told here that I have a ratio 15 to 25. Remember, we use a colon to represent a ratio. So we need to think what number goes into 15 and what number goes into 25. Ooh, I know. My HCF is going to be the number 5. So how many times does 5 go into 15? 5, 10, 15. We are dividing by 5, so we get a 3. Beautiful. All right, so I can go divide by 5. I'm going to now divide by 5. What is 25 divided by 5? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. That is 5 times. That means this ratio here is the same as this ratio over here. Okay, let's have a go at another one. 7 and 21. What numbers go into both 7 and 21? So we need to think about it. Oh, the highest common factor is going to be 7. So... What is 7 divided by 7? Seven? 7 goes into 7 once. 21 divided by 7 is 3. So 7 to 21 is the same as 1 is to 3. All right, next one. An example like this, we can simplify it. So see how this has a 0 on the end? We're going to knock it off. And if we knock off a 0 on this side, we have to knock off a 0 on this side. So we've got the number 45 compared to 20. So what number goes into 45 and 20? The number 5. So 5 goes into 45 nine times. And 5 goes into the number 20 four times. So that is now simplified. All right. These are numbers that we are used to working with when we were doing our fractions unit, OK? Now we have actual fractions. And what do we know about fractions when we are working with them, especially when we're adding or subtracting things? We need to make sure that they have the same denominator. So over here, I've got a five and I've got two. How do I make the denominators the same? We think about what numbers both of those can go into. So that is the number 10. Okay, so we're gonna go over 10, over 10. Okay, so how many times does two go into 10? How many times does five go into 10? All right, let's start over here. 5 goes into 10 twice. So we're going to now times our top number by 2 as well. So 3 times 2 is 6. 2 goes into 10 5 times. So what we do to the bottom, we're going to do to the top. 1 times 5 is also 5. Now we notice how both of these denominators are the same. We can cancel those, and I can now say that my ratio is 6 to 5. Okay? So we go at another one. So they're both improper. We want to change them to proper fractions. So, oh, sorry, the proper fractions, we want to change them to improper fractions. Remember, we times and add. So 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. So that's 7 over 3. And then we do the same here. 4 times 1 is 4. Plus 1 is 5. So 5 over 4. And we want to make sure that both of our um, denominators are the same. So 3 and 4 both go into the number 12. So we're going to write 
12, 12. And then we see how many times does 3 go into 12? It goes in 4 times 3, 6, 9, 12. So we do 7 times 4 is 28. And we can go here, 4 into 12 goes 3 times. 5 times 3 is 15. So what I can do, because both of our denominators are now the same, I can cancel them. And I can go, my ratio is 28 to 15. Okay, so simplifying ratios is a lot to do with our fractions, a lot to do with finding our highest common factor as well. Okay. Now changing units. When we're comparing ratios, remember I said you can't have the units to be different. Okay, when we're comparing ratios, we want the units to be the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert both of these into millimetres. So we've already got four millimetres here. So I'm going to keep that as four millimetres. But what's two centimetres? How do we convert centimetres to millimetres again? You might have to go back in your notes. To convert centimetres to millimetres, we times by 10. So two times 10 is 20. So that's going to be 20 millimetres. And now that both of our numbers are the same, I can write it as a ratio, four to 20. But remember from here, we know how to simplify. So we can say what number goes into four and 20? That is the number four. Four goes into four one time. And four goes into 20 five times. So that is my answer. Okay, next one. 25 minutes to two hours. We don't want to work in minutes and hours. We want them both to be the same. So we're going to work in minutes. So I'm going to go 25 minutes to two hours. How many minutes are there in two hours? Well, in one hour, there's 60 minutes. So in two hours, there's going to be 120 minutes. And we can now compare our two answers. So 25 to 120. And we can say what number goes into 20, sorry, 25 and 120. That is the number five. So 5 goes into 25 five times, and 5 goes into 120, if we count, goes in 24 times. So 5 to 24 is my answer. All right, so we're going to be working through exercise 6B today. I'm going to be writing the questions that you're going to be working on onto the post of this video.